Hello there. Welcome to Just the Discs. We talk about Blu-rays here. My name's Brian, and today we are talking about Joseph Losey. And the reason this topic is coming up is because of the release of his film from 1963, The Servant. Now, um, Losey is a really interesting and prolific director that I find to be one of those great craftsmen, you know, in the conversation with a guy like Kubrick, you know, just in terms of the amount of care put into the filmmaking, in terms of framing and production design and working with the actors and the writing, just a really sharp guy and a blacklisted director ultimately that ended up uh, working in England for the latter more, I want to say more than half of his career, but really did a lot of interesting stuff, and including some collaborations with the great playwright and writer Harold Pinter, and I think this may be the first of their collaborations. Um, this is described as the, well, the back says, the prolific, ever-provocative pr Joseph Losey, blacklisted from Hollywood and living in England, delivered a coolly modernist shock to the system of that nation's cinema with this mesmerizing dissection of class, sexuality, and power. A dissolute uh, scion of the upper crust, played by James Fox, finds the seemingly perfect manservant, a uh, diabolical Dirk Bogard, during his transition from matinee idol to art house icon to oversee his new London townhouse. But not all is as, is as it seems, as traditional social hierarchies are gradually disturbingly destabilized, lustriously disorienting cinematography and masterful script by playwright Harold Pinter merge in The Servant, a tour de force of mounting psychosexual menace. Um, that's a good description. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, the basic idea is that James Fox is this well-to-do gentleman uh, who's just come back from Africa. I think he was in the uh, service, and he's got this new townhouse, and it's not uh, ready to go like it's basically barren um, some of the rooms are empty and Dirk Bar Bogard answers I guess an ad to be the manservant and he shows up and James Fox is already just passed out uh, from I guess too much beer um, and it is interesting how the dynamic begins you know is a very uh, I am your you know gentleman's gentleman and you are my master boss kind of, you know, sublimated sort of dynamic that starts and it slowly starts to shift over time. We start to see sort of cracks in the veneer um, due in some small part to the fact that uh, James Fox's character has a girlfriend, I think, played by uh, Wendy Craig, who... A very uh, snobby gal and is very um, condescending to Dirk Bogut's character like right out of the gate is just like giving him orders as if he's her manservant and he does not like her and he does not really hide it too well and that sort of begins the look at like where is this going how is this going to end up and then Dirk Bogard ends up, his character ends up inviting his sister to stay there because um, I think their mother's ill. I can't remember what excuse he uses to get the sister in there, but that is a complicated thing and not as it seems. So um, I won't go too far into spoilers, but like I said, it is fascinating to watch Dirk Bogard, one of the great British actors ever, uh, and James Fox in an I think early theatrical role. I want to say he was cast in part because of um, some kind of a television show or movie that he did that some producer or someone saw. And he is really, really great as this, you know, condescending but oddly naive, uh, you know, rich guy. And yeah, it's just the Pinter dialogue and the dynamic. I mean, it's, it's not his dialogue. He's adapting... Uh, a novel uh, by uh, Robin Mom, and 
I think, like, I, I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but I think it might be his first theatrical screenplay. I could be wrong about that. Um, but yeah, it's just got this really crackling dialogue and interactions as the story progresses. And it's really one that I, like I said, I'm, I don't want to give away too much because I really feel like it benefits from just being viewed. Um, uh, it's also like the back mentions uh, the cinematography. It's shot by Douglas Slocum, who would go on to shoot the uh, Indiana Jones films for Spielberg and uh, Murphy's War. And he did a lot of great stuff, a really, really wonderful cinematographer. And the black and white cinematography is lovely here. Um, there is a, I have to mention, there is a 4K of The Servant, which I picked up prior to this. And this is a Studio Canal 4K. And it, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to say this looks a little better than the Criterion, obviously, because it's a 4K, but I think it might be the same scan. I am i don't have the full details on that. I'm not 100% sure, but I believe it is. Um, the Blu-ray looks great. I mean, both are wonderful presentations of a good-looking film, but I, I had to notice the difference and just see you know, was it, was I glad that I picked up this 4k? And yes, I was. And we'll also talk about the extras. M many of them on this criterion disc are on this, uh, 4k, but there are definitely some, some things that are not included. Um, so let me go through that. Uh, the special features on this criterion disc include, uh, something called the look of Lozy, which is about 20 minutes and 45 seconds and it has one of my favorite Criterion collaborators Imogen Sarah Smith and she sheds light on Losi's like signature style his thematic obsessions that are present through more than 30 features that he made over the course of his decades long career and uh, it's nothing less than an excellent overview from like I said one of my favorite film historians and she touches on so much including giving a sense of where Losey began and how he found his way into films, you know, making films in general and how the blacklist ended up being beneficial in his mind and that it got him out of the U S and out of Hollywood and then, you know, making movies, uh, overseas in England where he ended, he ended up dying in 1984 in London. Um, but so yeah, he made a lot of his best stuff, I think after he was blacklisted and this is definitely one of the, examples of the great works he's done. I'll go through some other Lozy on Blu-ray in, in a little bit here, but um, so that's a really wonderful feature. Like that alone would be great. Um, she also touches on the themes like class conflicts, power dynamics and relationships, and the way the ways that people dominate and or are dominated by others uh, in his films, as well as a profound pessimism about heterosexual relationships that seems to pervade his work and also the spaces and how they define a character's class, but also set a mood and how these spaces connect to other spaces and houses and apartment buildings. He's just really meticulous about space and, you know, uh, shot selection and mise-en-scene. Like he just really, like I said, is, is such a great craftsman. Um, and she goes through a lot of, uh, those elements and it's just a really great overview. Like I said, then there is Joseph Losey on The Servant. This is a 28-minute audio interview. It's audio excerpts from a 1976 interview Losey did on the making of The Servant that critic Michael Cement, or Cement uh, conducted as part of the research for his seminal book on the director, Conversations with Losey. And the conversation touches on Losey's experience working with Harold Pinter, shooting the film, the themes design and uh, look of the film and uh, the legacy of the film. Uh, and Losi is just like a really highly intelligent and articulate guy. And it really comes through in this interview. And it's just neat to hear his take on things and how this movie got started and how he works with writers. And it just like, a, like I said, you listening to a guy that you're like, this guy really knows what he's doing. And uh, I dug that a lot. Uh, speaking of Pinter, then we have a Harold Pinter screenwriter, 23-minute interview. This is excerpts from an interview with Pinter conducted at London's National Film Theater in 1996 by his official bi biographer, Michael Billington. Um, this is a video interview, unlike the 
Losi interview, which is just audio. Uh, the uh, great Mr. Pinter um, discusses not only his collaborations with Losi and how his work differs from his work on the stage, but also his formative years as a youngster in a film club in finding himself absolutely fascinated by film itself. And he goes into some of the films that left a big impression on him. Uh, Boone well being one of the filmmakers that really meant a lot to him. And you can definitely feel that, you know, in this film. I mean, there is definitely something about it that feels like it would pair well with, you know, discreet charm of the bourgeoisie or exterminating angel or something like that. It just feels like it, it's not quite as surreal, but there is a touch of that. And so it's neat to hear that Bunuel was in the mix. And he talks about some other filmmakers and process. Another really, really intelligent guy um, talking about ad- ad- adaptation and the, getting the spirit of the work and just a, a lot of great stuff in there. Uh, and then there's interviews with the actors. Now, some of these, I, like I said, are included on this 4K. Um, the one that isn't is with Dirk Bogard. Uh, the, so you got the four lead actors that are interviewed here. So Dirk Bogard uh, for 11 minutes and 14 seconds. Then James Fox in a very lengthy interview uh, with his son-in-law, actor and comedian Richard Ayodad. Uh, um, and that's a really great conversation because he just you get there's a comfort that he obviously has with uh, Richard that's makes it a very intimate and enjoyable chat and you can just tell that they're both enjoying themselves and so that's really cool that one is part of the this 4k as is the sarah miles interview which is almost 11 minutes and the wendy craig interview which is much shorter about six minutes and they're all basically reflecting on their experiences working on the film um the interview with bogart is from a 1992 documentary uh dirk bogart by myself well the rest of those were shot in the uk in 2013 um, and like I said, those are included here. I'm trying to think. Joseph Losey talks about The Servant. And there's an audio interview with Douglas Slocum on here that's not included. Uh, as well as a video essay by film historian Matthew Sweet and film critic uh, Feng Lee. Feng Lee. Um, and an interview with Stephen Woolley. I mean, there's a lot of stuff between the two. I'm going to keep both because... There's definitely some, I mean, this is the 4K, but there's material here that's not there. And anyway, it's it's good stuff. Uh, that is the actor interviews. And then um, the last, well, I guess the Bogart interview was actually one that I wanted to talk about. The Bogart interview is he recollects being very lu- reluctant to work with Joseph Losey at the beginning because Losey was less known at the time and Bogart Bogart was at the sort of top of his game. Um, he said there was a sense of urgency from either producers or whoever was giving him the initial script that they were going to work with for this servant, um, which I don't think he liked. I was unclear if it was the servant or another project, but I think it was the servant that he didn't love the script to start with. Or he didn't love the material. Maybe it was the book before Pinter. That, that's the part that I was a little confused about. But he was so hot in terms of, not hot, but like Losey was in a bad place in terms of um, his blacklisting that they actually had an arrangement where they were going to have another director on set that would be sort of, you know, standing in for him and so that he could direct, but he wouldn't be the official director. And that ended up going bad like one of the actors spotted uh or somebody spotted Losi on the set and basically he had to go away so that was their first collaboration that didn't work out and then later they came back apparently and did this script but one of the things that Bogard mentions that I thought was great was that he was reluctant but after seeing the first reel of the Prowler which is one of the blu-rays I have here unfortunately this one's out of print sadly um but this is a really great this is before um, I think before the blacklisting, this is just a wonderful and dark, dark noir with um with Van Heflin and Evelyn Keys. 
where he's a cop that ends up sort of, he's a very unscrupulous cop that ends up sort of manipulating a woman that, you know, calls in for some help at one point and they start to go after her husband, who's like a radio personality and, um, it goes really dark, but it's really well done. So anyway, I just love that the Prowler was the thing that fully convinced Dirk Bogard to work with Joseph Losey uh, when he saw it. And if you see the Prowler, um, this is written by Dalton Trumbo, so you get a lot of blacklist energy happening here. Uh, you will understand why. It's just a really well done and unique noir. And Van Heflin is just crazy good, but, you know, crazy creepy as well. Anyway. So let's transition a little into talking about some other Lozy. Uh, some of my favorites include um, Boom. <laughs> now this one falls maybe into the more camp category, I guess. Uh, I know this is a favorite of John Waters. And in fact, this includes that this Shout Factory Blu-ray includes a commentary with John Waters, which is really great. Um, I'll read the back because it's a difficult movie to synopsize and I forget how the back does it but they say cinema icons and twice married couple Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton light up the screen in what acclaimed playwright Tennessee Williams described as the best film adaptation of his work he'd ever seen Sissy Goforth uh, that's Liz Taylor the world's richest woman has retired to her lavish island estate to dictate her memoirs her reclusive lifestyle is thrown into upheaval when a roguish poet Chris Flanders that's Burton washes up on her beach with the mysterious habit of calling upon a lady one step before the undertaker, Flanders has become known as the angel of death, but an undaunted go forth opts to tempt fate when she chooses to take Flanders as her next and last lover. A notorious bomb on its initial release, Boom has since built up a cult following for its one of a kind mixture of camp lyricism and the highly combustible chemistry of its two leads. More than 50 years after Boom's debut, Shout Factory invites you to light the fuse on a re-examination of this highly unusual drama. This also includes a, an interview with uh, one of my favorite film critics, Alonzo, Alonzo Duraldi, The Sound of a Bomb, contextualizing Boom, which is a really great little featurette with him interview. Um, but yeah, it's just a crazy movie. She lives on this island. She has this um, tape recording thing that she speaks into for her memoirs. She has a woman that's... I guess, um, taking down the dictation from it, but she'll just get up and start talking into it. And she talks in a speaker throughout the house. Uh, it's bizarre. Um, the house is like this open, weird Greek islandy thing. I know it's really a difficult movie to encapsulate, like I said, but I really enjoy it. And, uh, I can see why John Waters does too. So that's boom. And then we have another one that in, uh, is a pinter screenplay. This is a Kino Blu-ray of The Accident, and this is from 67, so this is following uh, The Servant. Uh, from L Joseph Losey, the legendary director of The Prowler, The Criminal, Modesty Blaze, Secret Ceremony, and Figures in a Landscape. I will mention a few of those in a minute. Um, comes this classic melodrama with a screenplay by the great Harold Pinter. Uh, when one of his students is killed in a car accident, an Oxford professor, Dirk Bogart, again, uh, recounts the circumstances of their meeting, but as these turbulent memories unfold, they reveal a series of shocking relationships betrayed by adultery, obsession, and self-destruction in which uh, nothing is what it seems. Again, very similar to The Servant in that way. Uh, and everything has its cost. The accident was a second of three brilliant collaborations between filmmaker Losey and playwright Pinter. The first was 1963 masterpiece The Servant, and the third, the 1971 classic The Go-Between. Uh, Stanley Baker, Michael York, Vivian Merchant, uh, Jacqueline Cesar, Delphine Sirig, Alexander Knox, and Freddie Jones co-star in this stunning 1967 drama, Newsweek called like a punch in the chest based on a novel by Nicholas Mosley uh, and beautifully shot by Jerry Fisher. Um, this has an audio commentary by Kat Ellinger. Um, but yeah, this is another one that I really dig. Uh, I haven't seen it in a while. I haven't had a chance to watch my Blu-ray even yet. But definitely um, got to see The Go-Between. The Go-Between I have not seen. Uh, and then, of course, as mentioned in that little blurb, we have Secret Ceremony, which has two Blu-rays. You have an Indicator Region B Blu-ray and a Kino Region A 
um, from Joseph Lowe's, the legendary director of The Criminal, The Servant, Accident, Modesty Blaze, Figures in Landscape, comes this lurid psychodrama starring the incomparable Elizabeth Taylor as an aging prostitute who befriends a young woman, uh, ethereal childlike Mia Farrow, uh, that reminds her of her long-dead daughter. Equally unnerving, Farrow sees in Taylor her own late mother as the bizarre relationship between the two evolves. The appearance of Robert Mitchum uh, as Farrow's lecherous stepfather ignites deep emotions and dark passions. Top-notch cinematography again by Jerry Fisher and supporting performances by Peggy Ashcroft. Tim Lucas does a commentary on this one, um, which I, I'm definitely looking forward to checking out. But yeah, this one is very weird. This is like in the weird category like boom, but not as fun, but definitely weird and interesting. And I, I like both the um, Blu-rays of it. Like I said, having the indicator was essential for me because it has some different features and, you know, I just love indicator. But yeah, so Secret Ceremony, definitely worth your time. And Figures in the Landscape is actually one of my favorite Lozies, surprisingly. And this one is just fascinating because it's it's pretty stripped down in terms of there's not a ton of dialogue, nor is there a ton of exposition in terms of um, what is happening. Like what, what, I'll read the back, but screen legends Robert Shaw and Malcolm McDowell co-star as desperate fugitives in an unnamed foreign land wanted for unknown crimes by a nameless, faceless enemy against a raw, unforgiving backdrop of parched desert and frozen mountains. Uh, McConaughey, uh, Shaw, and Ansel run for their lives, but even as they cross a seemingly endless expanse of open territory, the walls of their cage begin to close in as a relentless helicopter pilot stalks them in a deadly game of cat and mouse. Legendary blacklisted filmmaker Joseph Losey directed the thrilling adventure yarn with a nonstop suspense and exhilarating action photography. I, I do want to mention the photography because one of the things about it is, like I said, there's not a lot of dialogue. These two are not saying a lot about like what they did or why they're running, but they're just running. And that I like a movie that kind of just goes like that. And this helicopter is just always, you're hearing it, you're seeing it, it's sort of ever-present. Um, but a lot of them is, is them just running and hiding. You know, it doesn't sound like it would be that interesting a movie, but it's really fascinating, and I absolutely love it. Um, and there's some crazy helicopter work. Like... The helicopter gets very close to the ground at times, and we don't ever see the pilot. So there's an odd kinship to something like Duel, where we don't ever see the driver of that truck. And so the helicopter itself seems like a monster. It's, I can't explain it. But there's some scenes where the helicopter gets so close to Robert Shaw that you're like, that seems really dangerous. I don't quite understand how that was even okay back in 1970. Um, but definitely would not be okay now. You definitely could not get a helicopter this close to an actor, uh, that you can plainly see is the actor. You know, it's not a stunt person. And I, it's just, that stuff really floors me in the midst of this, this weird, you know, tale out of time and space. Like you don't know anything. And so it's just really great to see two actors like Malcolm McDowell and Robert Shaw working together. And, yeah, I just, I really dig this one a lot. Legit, one of my favorite Losey films. Um, it needs a commentary, and this Blu-ray is a little bit old. Um, I would love to see this one get updated. It's a 235 to 1 widescreen movie. Really good stuff. Last one I'll mention is Modesty Blaze. Um, this is more commercial stuff. Uh, I think this one's out of print, too. But um, uh, her appearance changes in a finger snap. She thrashes villains without missing a spike heeled step. Welcome to the mod, mod world of sexy, stylish British super agent Modesty Blaze, played by Monica Beatty. Hired by the government to prevent a diamond heist, Modesty recruits her wily sidekick Willie Garvin, that's Terrence Stamp, to help her battle crafty, colorful foes on the secluded island of a suave mastermind thief, Gabriel Dirk Bogard, again, and conniving partner, Mrs. Fothergill, uh, Roselle Falk. Grooving with mile-high hairdos and swinging psychedelic wall patterns, Modesty Blaze is a campy entertainment uh, at its best. The great Joseph Losey directed this outrageous spy spoof featuring a stellar cast that includes Harry Andrews, Clive Revel, and Alexander Knox. Um, 
God, I forgot this was a two-hour movie. This is definitely one of those, like it says, sort of a campy spy, you know, James Bond adjacent, although James Bond is still just sort of taking off at this time. But, you know, a female James Bond, this is based on, um, I thought it was based on a novel, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, and, you know, it's a 60s spy movie, but it's got that flashy production design and just mods, you know, feeling that I think is really entertaining. I think this one's out of print too, like I said, this Blu-ray, unfortunately, but uh, definitely an influence on, it seems like, on something like Austin Powers or anything that's throwing to a sort of a 60s kitsch vibe. I was actually thinking of um, uh, Roman Coppola's movie CQ. Uh, I know Di- Danger Diabolic is like a real, the, the Bava film is a real touchstone for him there, but I, I I swear he mentions Modesty Blaze even maybe in a commentary or an interview. It's definitely one of the things I think it influenced the spy film in the film of CQ. If you haven't seen CQ, it's a really interesting movie about Jeremy Davies plays a, a you know, young uh, writer. I can't remember if he's a screenwriter or a filmmaker, but they're making basically a spy movie a la Danger Diabolic with a female spy and it feels like Modesty Blaze has got to be in the mix. You know, it's one of those. Um, and this includes an interview with the first assistant director, Gavrik Losey, interviews with screenwriter Evan Jones and assistant art director Norman Dorm, audio commentary by film historian David DelVal and filmmaker Armand Mastriani. David DelVal is always fun and he's always involved in these sort of campier films. And I love the stuff that he's, when I see him on a commentary, I'm like, oh, this is going to be an interesting, fun, maybe campy movie. Um, but anyway, so that's an overview of some Lozy stuff on Blu-ray, uh, as well as, of course, our you know main feature, again, The Servant from Criterion. Definitely worth your time, definitely worth checking out, and I'm glad that Criterion has put this out on Blu-ray. I wish they had done their own 4K of it, but uh, for whatever reason, they decided to just go Blu-ray for this. Regardless, uh, it is a good disc and uh, worth your time, I think. Uh, Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.